On today's episode of the Deron Messinger Show, we named three Longhorns players that need to show some improvement in the spring. Longhorns fans, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. It's greatly appreciated. So to begin, Dylan, yes, we already teased it. We got three Longhorns players that we think need to improve in the spring. Obviously, last year's season was not pretty. And these guys, I believe that we've all picked, are not incoming freshmen. These are guys that were on the team that have something to prove in this next year. Who's the first one on your list? Well, Devin, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but again, I'm going to go with Hudson Card. This is a guy that we've seen. We saw some games out of him last year. There was hopes that he would be able to you know, take over for uh, Casey Thompson, maybe be the uh, full-fledged quarterback going forward for the Texas Longhorns. But that, that narrative obviously changed after the, uh, this, the uh, disappointing season, I would say, not making a bowl game. I would think a lot of Texas fans would say that was very, very disappointing, to say the least. might be an understatement to say that. But <laughs> again, again... Hudson Card has a lot to prove going into the spring. There's been, you know, obviously the big name transfer, Quinn Ewers out of Ohio State, former five-star out of South Lake Carroll, who we've talked about a lot. So he's got that in the rearview mirror, as well as just, you know, obviously some quarterback talent behind Quinn Ewers as well. So this will be this will be a spring where Hudson Card really needs to work on his game, work on just, you know, how he's going to be able to handle pressure. We'll see how what they run him through uh, in spring drills and and. Mostly just see how he feels in the uh, in the spring game, Devin. Yeah, I think that's a good pick. I know we talked about it quite a bit on the last video, but it's still his job to lose technically. I mean, Casey Thompson would have been the tabbed starter, I guess, if he had not transferred. And now Card obviously has the most experience in that locker room. That might not be saying a lot at this point in time, Dylan, but he does have that. What I want to see him build over the spring period is some more confidence in his abilities. You know, he's a top-ranked quarterback, not the top-ranked quarterback, one of the top-ranked quarterbacks for a reason. So I agree with that, hoping that obviously he can come away with a strong spring. My pick for number one here, they're not ranked, so there's no order of importance, but DeMarvion Overshown. Prior to the season, he was being tabbed by many as a, I'm not going to say first round draft pick because that might be a little bit of a reach, but an early round draft pick. And he has a lot of potential. He's pretty fast at that linebacker position, but last year was not super pretty for him. I know he's a key name that all the fans know and love, but he needs to step up his game a little bit. But I believe, Dylan, this is going to be the first offseason in a while, if not during his entire tenure at Texas, where he's going to be healthy and able to hit the weight room. He's changed positions a couple of times in the past, so this offseason will do him justice, I think, and hopefully he's able to get that name recognition back and in, into the eyes of NFL scouts. Now, uh, Dylan, who's number two? Well, Devin, there's a lot of shoes to fill with Josh, Josh Thompson leaving um, for the NFL draft, so that cornerback position is going to be one to highlight. I'm looking at Deshaun Jameson and Anthony Cook. Uh, John Jameson definitely looks like he'll be the, uh, the main guy back there in the secondary, but Anthony Cook, you know, he didn't have an interception last year. I don't think he had a pass breakup either, Devin. So only really stats-wise that he was doing numbers on was uh, was tackles, and when you're a corner, tackling is probably not what you want to see because uh, that, that means the team is, like, you know, kind of breaking out in the secondary, Devin. So <laughs> that's not a not a good sign, but we're looking, at a, we're looking at those two to see what kind of improvements they can make. Obviously, there's that. Ryan Watts transferred from Ohio State. You know, you got four-star four star, four star uh, corner prospects in uh, Terrence Brooks and Jason Gilbo. So we'll see what those guys bring to the table in the spring. But, uh, you know, you've got, you know, f some f uh, four-year guys that have been waiting for their chances here in Deshaun Jameson and Anthony Cook. So they really need to step it up. Texas has fallen a uh, long ways from, you know, anywhere near a DBU kind of university. So hey, hey, hey. <laughs> this will be this will be a, be a telling season, it's a telling spring as well, Devin. Yeah, I think you misspoke on Jason. I think it's Jalen, Jalen Gilbo, but he's a freshman, Dylan. He's gonna earn that you know respect from you over time, I guess. But uh, now I heard reports, I believe from inside Texas, that he's had a strong spring so far and he's impressing guys. And I agree, all those names you listed are definitely names for Longhorns fans to be paying attention to. Watts coming from Ohio State, obviously. Got, you got some expectations from a pretty good program, Dylan. You might not want to admit that, but, I mean, cornerback, I've seen a lot of burnt toast in these last couple of years in that secondary, so I agree 
I don't want to see too many tackles out of them unless they're stepping up in the run game. <laughs> but hopefully they don't have to do that too often either. So my next one, not the uh, flashy pick, Dylan, but I have a combo kind of like you just had there of Christian Jones and Andre Carrick. Both players had some starts under their belt last season, but speaking of burnt toast, last season was not necessarily pretty, especially for the quarterbacks of Card and Thompson because they were on their backside quite a bit or getting pressured. And Jones and Carrick, like all these guys, you know, if you're getting to UT, they have potential, but they still have a lot of work to do. And I think their, their spring is very important too because they have to make a lot of ground before the incoming freshman class comes in. I believe there's only one lineman, and I believe that's Cole Hudson, that's currently an early enrollee. So by the time that the spring classes end, they have had to have gotten in the uh, good graces of Sark and Kyle Flood. So those are the two that I think have the most to prove of the spring. Yet again, they have potential, but we still have to see it or else they're going to have to lose their job to a freshman. So who's next, Dylan? Well, for me, Devin, for some more big boy action as well as you know defensive help, I'm looking at Alfred Collins. He showed a lot of flashes last year. He played, he played nine games last season. He had 14 tackles and two sacks. So hopefully uh, just more com, some consistent work, especially just being an all-around starter on that defensive line for Texas will hopefully serve him wonders because he was kind of like splitting time with uh, Devontae Sweat. But that's an, also another guy is Devontae Sweat as well. We'll see what he can do. He's got um, got some talent. He's got a, he's got a big body to maybe uh, you know, block up some running lanes. But, you know, <sighs> Hopefully, there will be improvement on, on those ends, as well as Keandre Coburn, who's looking to be the uh, starting nose tackle. He sets the hope going into the season for Texas. This guy is a, another big, big dude. Show up those running lanes, which Texas obviously struggled against when playing more physical teams, That, that those running games. Let's just put it nicely. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not good. We're that not Arkansas good Texas, game. Though. Put on the tape, Dylan. Yeah, so when we're talking about guys like Damari and Overshawn back in the linebacking core, those are guys that would greatly benefit from an improved defensive line to where it doesn't feel like they're having to do everything or, you know, get up too close to the line, which then opens up those those passing lanes as well for the opposing team. So look for the defensive line, and especially Alfred Collins, Devin, in the spring to be really hitting the, hitting the weight room and, and improving the, uh, the their fundamentals. Definitely. We love fundamentals on this channel. And speaking of fundamentals, Dylan, transition right there. Jatavian Sanders is my last player to watch during the spring. Now, I did not put him on this list necessarily because he's someone that has to prove something in the spring. You know, he's a little bit lower on the depth chart right now, but I know fans are wondering where he is. And we saw him at Denton Ryan, and it was hard when watching Denton Ryan to not know where he is because he was always the one making the play on defense and on offense but I put him on this list because this past season was his first season playing tight end he was traditionally at wide receiver or defensive end so a lot of adjustment to be made and it's not like running back you know Dylan where you can come in on the team theoretically as a freshman and at least get some snaps and you know do decent if you're a good running back of course but tight end you got to learn blocking assignments as well as your routes to run so I have faith in him. He's obviously a talented athlete. I believe he's about 6'4", 6'5". You know, he runs like the wind, Dylan, for a guy of his size. And a lot of potential there. But then again, Jaleel Billingsley, the transfer from Alabama. You got Gunnar Helm on the roster again. And he Helm was able to see some snaps last year, even though he was an underclassman. So not promising in terms of Sanders ability right now to get onto the field he still has to face Juan Davis as well and obviously he's got a shot I think all these guys are probably kind of open season in terms of who's going to be starting in the end but obviously if you're getting a guy like Billingsley he's probably not coming for a backup job either so I'm interested to see Sanders in the spring game hopefully we can see something out of him and I, I know we still got another month or two to go, so I might be getting a little optimistic there. But exciting things going on in the 40 acres, Dylan. <laughs> that's that, and that's a big position, Devin. That tight end position is going to open up a lot, open up a lot on that offensive end for those for these quarterbacks. You know, Hudson Card, Quinn Ewers. You're going to need those dump off routes. So having a 
having a big old reliable tight end for Texas would be a huge, huge upgrade. Definitely, a Jason Witten would be uh, needed for them right now. Oh, that too, yeah. Just, well, he might. Maybe he needs to get some a uh, graduate degree, Devin. Maybe he can come by. I was gonna say he, he came out of retirement pretty fast, so get him a degree again, and uh, I think we're good. But what do you guys think about the Longhorns? and their spring improvements that are needed, what positions or players do you want to see the most in the spring? I know I heard a lot of Troy Omires, and he's coming off injury, so it might be a little too soon to name drop him there, but we'll see. But what do you guys think? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.